So you get yourself a gun dog and you want to train it to a high standard so you can take it on a shoot. Well, you have to train it before you take it on the shoot. Too many people think they can take a part trained dog on a shoot and it'll listen to them. It doesn't work, the wheels fall off. In this environment, I'm teaching the dog obedience, but I'm using gameplay to teach that obedience and it's so important. This dog's got to love this game before he goes onto a shoot. If he doesn't go into a shoot and love the game when he gets on the shoot, you haven't trained him right. The dog has got to have the drive for the retrieve and the desire to bring it back to you and present it to you, knowing it's your retrieve, not the dog's retrieve. These are not pets, these are working dogs. This is a channel for people who want to get their dog to a good standard, a working level standard. My majority of my videos these days are over on my Patreon site and they're over there with like-minded people all who are learning to train their dogs to a better standard and that's what this site is about it's about getting your dog to a better standard not listening to those internet know-it-alls who know very little and they love giving advice but they never put up their work what you've got to do is you've got to put up your work take this dog for instance this isn't a perfect heel is it no because he's a young dog and i'm teaching drive and desire first then i put the control in but I'm beginning to put the control in and using it through the leash for this dog. This dog is focused on me, ready to go, wants it. The drive he goes out there with shows me that I'm not suppressing him to the point that he's bored. He loves the game, wants to play the game. And the drive he's got is what I'm tapping into. That natural ability to want to work, want to please look. He's focused on the game. And that's what it's about. So it doesn't matter whether I'm training Labradors, Springer Spaniels, Cocker Spaniels. Here's a young pup introducing the gameplay. The gameplay at this young age is so important. Without this gameplay, you haven't built your foundation. That dog has got to want to race out and want to race back with it for a reason. It's enjoying itself. If the dog is enjoying itself, it will want to play the game. It doesn't matter what I throw for this young pup whether it's a dried wing, whether it's a dummy, whether it's a tennis ball, this little pup wants to play the game and wants to bring it back to me to, because it wants the game to continue. Look at it jumping up, am I knocking it down? Am I suppressing it? No, I'm building drive and desire and gameplay. Gameplay for me and this little pup that this little pup says, hang on, I love this. Then they're easy to train. It's when you let them take over. It's when you give them too much too soon and they become spoilt like a child that is spoilt and wants everything and if you don't give it to the child then the child plays up and that's what we're seeing in today's dogs what they're not seeing is gameplay at the right time and correction at the right time but would I be correcting a young pup like this no I'm building a bond with the young pup it's so important to know when to use discipline and how to use discipline other trainers don't really want to talk about it do they they don't mind you showing you a trained dog or talking about a trained dog, but actually getting that dog to want to be with them is so important. Like I say, 95% of training is fun based. That 5% of discipline at the right time, that dog is learning to sit, waiting to play the game, and yet it's a baby. It's a real baby. It's coming to play the game with me. It's not running off around the field and I'm chasing it. It wants to be with me. It's getting that dog to switch off at the right time. And that is what is so important when you, when you start training dogs. You have to understand how to get into the mindset of the dog and not overstimulate the brain so the dog says there's more important things in life. But this is what's important to this little puppy at the moment. If this little pup gets this instilled into it from day one, then we start to build on that. That's our foundation we build on. And it's so important because you can do all your flashy stuff with your more experienced dogs, but this is what you need to build up with. And it takes time, it's repetition, repetition. So here we go, here we got Wiz now, when he was a youngster, look how keen he is. He's bouncy, he's keen. He keeps pulling back to these birds on the floor here, but not touching them because I keep saying, no, leave that. He's learning for association. that When I say go and pick a dummy, you pick a dummy. You don't just race over to the bird and say they are higher value. But he goes back to the birds, look, but he knows 
he wants to be with me because I've built up the gameplay with the dummy. The dummy is the most important thing to him, but those birds are becoming more valuable now as he's getting older. But guess what? If you haven't instilled it with the dummies at this point, then you're going to struggle because if the dog then says game and scent is more important than those dummies, then you're in trouble. Then what are you going to do? You can't train with game all year round unless you've got access to it and not many people have all year round. I keep stuff in the freezer, but you can't beat warm game and cold game that's not been in the freezer. It's important when you're training, you're using cold game, warm game, dummies. I'm positioning myself there on purpose to make sure he doesn't drop that dummy. He goes back to them birds, look, he's doing nothing wrong. I asked him to sit. He's focused on, on the retrieve. Looks back at me to say, send me dad. I call him in, he's sharp, and look at the pace he goes out there. That's not because he's been suppressed, that's because he's been trained to love what he's doing. He loves what he's doing, and yet we've used discipline. How dare they say that we punish our dogs and our dogs don't like playing the game, and we force them into doing what we do. They haven't got a clue. I keep saying, put up your video, show us your work. I show my work. Look how sharp he is. Look how focused he is. Look how he comes into me and sits there beautiful, ready for that retrieve, ready for the next next game. So we bring out that young Labrador again. Look, look at him, he's, he's really driven, he wants it. He really, really wants it. He's on edge, but we're now putting in the control. We've built the drive. Look at that drive he's got to go out there. We're then putting in the control. So we build drive first. People are scared of drive. They think the dog is going to become uncontrollable. No, it's not, because when you bring it back and you train it the way we show you, there's thousands of videos now on my Patreon site for people who are generally interested. And the base level is only five pounds, five pounds a month. You can't buy a coffee for that, can you? At the end of the day, you've got access to a large back catalog in tier one. Then if you want to really become a good, have a good understanding about dog training, come over to tier two. And then when you've mastered it and you're beginning to really enjoy training a dog, to a high level and watching other people as well then come over to tier three and that's what people do you don't have to come over and make a year's commitment i'm not charging you for a year in advance you pay for a month if you don't like it you can cancel it straight away but we show you how to get your dog to switch off as well as keep that desire and drive that desire and drive is so important that focus that your dog's got for you and the desire it wants to please. And yet, look at the dog, he's ready waiting. There's the drive. It's so important. If the dog walks out there and walks back, he's doing it, but has he been forced to do it? Has he been has he been overtrained? Have you used too much obedience? Regimental schooling was the way we used to train dogs. We don't train dogs like that no more. How did we learn this? I learned it from the competition side. I learned the fact that I had to beat people with a dog that was faster, pacier, and, and, and smarter. A dog that could use its own brain rather than be handler reliant. A dog that could show off its true skills because you've not suppressed it. That's what this is all about, everybody. It's about the quality of your training. It's about the quality of my teaching. I get results. I get people to get results, and that's so important. As you can see, he wants to play the game. He's sharp when I ask him to stop. He, right on top of it, that was. Look, just shows the control. Bring him back. Tell him to leave that. Then push him back out there again. When I'm ready for him to pick it, he'll pick it. But look at that sharpness. Not taking away that natural ability, but I've got that control as well. You saw I stopped him right close to it. I said, leave that. Come back to me. And then I sent him for it. This is part and parcel of that training. If you don't get in there before you take them on a shoot, you won't control them on a shoot. You train them like I show you. When you take them on a shoot, they love it. And you've got a lovely, well-schooled dog. And that's what this is all about. It's about having quality when you're out there working with your dog. People will give you compliment after compliment, saying what a wonderful dog you've got. And you get invites back everywhere because they want good quality dogs under control, well-trained. The idea is it doesn't matter what gun dog it is, it's got to be able to switch off when you ask it to switch off. We don't want noise. 
We want the dog sitting there calm, waiting for the retrieve. Look how, look how calm I am and went towards him when he went to move. But I let him have it because he, he, he sat back and went, okay, this dog was running in only three weeks before this. This is how fast you can put the stop on them and the control on them when, when you eventually want to do it. I don't put the sit on a dog too soon other than gameplay. But when I ask the dog to sit, if the dog doesn't sit, we use discipline at the right time. And how do you know how to use discipline if people aren't showing you? That's the biggest problem in today's dog training world. And it was 30, 40 years ago because you saw people being very hard on dogs and flattening dogs. If you're not careful, you think that's the way to do it. So you flatten dogs and you think that's a good dog. But then when you do see a good dog and you think, how the hell did he get that dog to listen? And yet it's so sharp and fast and pacey and it's got such drive and yet he's got control over it. That's the trainers you want to listen to. That's the trainers you want to get their knowledge from. But unfortunately, they're not out there, are they? Because everybody is too scared. They haven't got a set of bollocks, have they, these days? They haven't got the set of bollocks. It's as simple as that. They're too scared to say what they do because they think it's going to upset society and upset snowflakes. Well, snowflakes, I don't want them watching these videos if it upsets them. Go and do something you like. But this is what I do for a living. I train dogs. I correct dogs when I have to, but I teach dogs. And if you haven't taught the dog and you're punishing a dog, then you are an idiot and you are cruel. But if you've taught the dog the behavior and the dog knows the behavior because you've t spent time conditioning that dog and teaching it, if the dog then goes wrong, you can use correction and the dog will go, I'll avoid that correction, that negative, and I'll work for the positive because everything I give these dogs when they retrieve is a positive. They want it. They're driven for it. He's looking at me, focused on me. I'm just calming him down now. I've got the drive. I'm now putting in the calmness because he's got to sit there for 20, 30 minutes sometimes and not have a retrieve. And if he's whining and fidgeting and moving on a shoot, he ain't no good to me.